Hello and welcome back to another episode of Diaries of Death. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the World of Warcraft Hardcore Diaries of Death um, playthrough where I am trying to survive with our witch. I'm dying on level 6 and beyond that. So, matter of fact, uh, you have already seen so far. Why am I short sure nonetheless? Because there is a additional boss I just accidentally stumbled into another Zulfarak group. And now that I do have the Mabel Tunnel, I'm gonna start off today's episode with a little bit of Zulfarak play and also with uh, me gonging the gong of Zulfarak and uh, getting the special boss uh, summoned. Uh, at the end of the day, we did a long uh, quest for it in the hinterlands, so might as well benefit from it. The pegs here are a little bit tougher, just number one, it means to choose work. But it's fine, at the end of the day, this group here is so much better than the one that we had uh, the last time. So yeah, uh, no problem whatsoever uh, so far, and I even chucked an arcane elixir. Uh, now we do have around a hundred uh, spell power with our gear. Which is great. So you will see, although everybody is a bit higher in level compared to me, I'm still doing very well for myself on the DPS charts. And then, of course, M crowd controlling as always. So, what we want to do is clear most of this room. Some boss in a second. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. Zuk-Zuk uh, was uh, the warrior that worked with us in Scarlet Monastery. Had a couple of old uh, acquaintances on the way. He made it to level 50 now? No, 49 it is, but still, not bad. And we ourselves are close to level 50. So that's not bad at all. Single pulls, I'll just um, drink through it and moderate uh, the fight. Um, with uh, with uh, a shaman, typically like Duan Mili is a very potent option. Wind Fury Totem is just incredibly OP. It's potentially the strongest one besides besides Mana Spring Totem. Just the damage output is enormous. So typically tanks them uh, well together, and with my improved Blizzard uh, rank 3, because Blizzard does less, dam uh, less mana, but also it's just so, so uh, good at uh, slowing them down. You can see that all of them are effectively stuck in the ground. percent uh, speed, speed slowing in nine stamina nine yeah I'll, I'll stick with our spell power I'm really happy that we did the quests in hinterland 
equipment that we've gotten out of it. I never appreciated just how much spell damage they might have changed that, but in my recollection, I didn't appreciate that there was a quasi spell selection uh, set available for a guaranteed to drop uh, because it, it was part of the quest or the quest rewards rather. Intelligence and 13 stamina. That's nice, but we have 13 spell power. Are we ready? Gonging. We have a guards uh, guards driller. All right, he wants to fight it here. Well, it's fine by me. Snowfall. Stay in the uh, hellstone. Very nice, and we got uh, another quest done. Good, let's trade in the quests and uh, call it a day. Uh, I'll fast forward that for you guys. All right, quest trade in. We got the scarabs. That means it's to level 50. We got super sticky, which might be to the south here. Troll Temper, which was a solid to gold. Uh, that is really good. And ourselves a nice little noggin fogger elixir very nice so that's all of the uh, quests and uh, with level 50 we're done with frost I could go like ultra deep frost which is possible but I think we're just going with Arcane because I want Arcane Resilience and the clear casting uh, or Arcane Concentration isn't bad either. Um, so let's reduce our, uh, the uh, ability of enemies to reduce any of our Arcane Skulls, as for instance uh, the Sheep. And yeah, from here on we're spending the rest of the Arcane. All right, so <clears throat> first things first, after we finished Zul uh, Farag, I'm actually quite happy about uh, that working out so well. We got our carrot on a stick trinket. Um, 
Well, it's a bit of a noob trinket, but uh, nonetheless, it is helpful in the outside world. Currently, we're doing a quest called Nat Pagel's Angler Extreme, which is the quest that allows us to raise angling from 125 all the way to 300. So the artisan um, angling quest line, so to speak, uh, the, where we need to find four fish in order to do that. The reason why I want to go with 300 uh, fishing instead of just yeah 225 is the chance of uh, catching fish is much better. And effectively with that Nat Pangler's Extreme Angler rod uh, that we already do have, <clears throat> we would be at 325 without any bait. And uh, with bait, we would be at uh, 400, which is good enough to um, get stone scale eels uh, without them escaping. And in case you're wondering why stone scale eels, stone scale eels are the main component for Flask of Titan and also for the stone, uh, uh, the petrification flask. So what is plus the Flask of Titan? What is petrification flask? Petrification flask allows you for an entire minute to not take any damage whatsoever, but you also cannot hit. And that is ultra important for later dungeons. You can, you need to be level 50 in order to consume them. Um, since this account here is currently still on cell found mode, I cannot even buy them and I don't have the recipe, so we're, we will need to do without uh, for now. But rest assured, I will buy a couple of those um, petrification flasks uh, later. <clears throat> and uh, it requires a lot of uh, that uh, stone eel uh, oil in order to build them. And Flask of Titans is by large and far the most important flask in hardcore if we ever want to uh, do advanced content uh, it basically increases your overall hit points by a thousand two hundred which is a massive amount and as you can appreciate uh, that will increase our survivability a tenfold if if we do uh, if we do take it so that however also takes an equal amount of uh, mm, yeah, stone scale eel. In both cases, we need angling in order to just fuel uh, our need for that. So first one was here in Feralus. Uh, the next one will be in Desolace, where we are going next. All right, off we go. We are now in Desolace, where uh, the second of the fishing quest uh, takes place. In the meantime, in order to be a little bit efficient, I did some quests, uh, more the remaining quests in Feralus. Uh, that was just on the way, and uh, we're going to trade them in as well. The moment that we're uh, catching whatever fish we need here, we are flying back and handing in a couple of quests. And then it is all the way to the other continent, because we will need to f catch two additional fish in order to get that going. And all of it will culminate then in uh, Duskwell Marsh, where we are handing in the quest and finally get artisan fishing. All right, well, let me get the fish. All right, so quite a few things happened. I finished uh, the angling quest and uh, had a bit of time to angle and also get cooking up. So fishing is now 250, cooking is 300. We're doing very, very well for ourselves. But today's episode shouldn't always uh, be about finishing Zulfarak or doing angling quests. No, we uh, have arrived in Ashara, which on the world map is next to Ashen Vale. Nice little higher level zone where I think we can uh, get a few quests going before we hit 51. So let's pick up a few quests here and there. Uh, I think we can abandon this one for now. Good. So we got a few delivery quests. Let's see. 
Gotta go back to Ashenvale. Okay, we can do that right away. Uh, we have destroyed a few uh, spirits. Uh, that will give us a follow-up quest. And then we have Undercity, the Art Mage, Ogrimmar, and Thunder Bluff. Well, thank God we are a mage because that'll be the easiest turn in of all of those quests that you have seen in a while. It'll just cost us a little bit of um, re reagents. But we should be fine. So Ashara, very much a coastal uh, region. I personally like it, but it is also a dangerous zone. Not only is there a roaming dragon here, but there are also elite giants, stone giants, uh, that uh, can be quite tough. So teleporting up here and up here, uh, up this mountain lives an arc mage uh, that had originally given us uh, the quest. So. I originally went ahead and started off uh, the very basic quests. There is an alliance NPC that we do not want to aggro. Mainly because it gets us PvP flagged. We could even kill uh, that one. But I really don't want to be PvP flagged. Not in a high level zone where level 60s could come around any time of the day. There we go. Need to get down there and glittering dust. Yeah, we get that from here. Okay, fair enough. Good. I think what we should do is visit all of the different regions. We're starting with Thunder Bluff. Might as well learn the te uh, portal to Thunder Bluff um, on the way, trade in some quests, and then go through uh, to Undercity and then to Ogrimmar. Good. Let's start with the portal teaching. Very good. Finally, the last portal, Thunder Bluff, always takes a little bit longer to learn. We need to be level 50 in order to do that. But yeah, we now got finally got all of the portals. There we go. Portal Thunder Bluff. Fabulous. Let's trade in. Good. We traded in uh, the second one this time in uh, Thunder Bluff. got another small quest here very good so next up we wanted to go to under city be this here number three and we got one more hand in. Very good. Bone-bladed weapons. What does he want us to do? Another Yunguro Crater quest. Holy smokes. Hmm. Hmm. All right, sure. Let's already get uh, some Unguro Crater going. And we're riding back to Ashara. All right, thanks to our portal ability, that was rather quick. And look at the experience. Man, that was a massive jump. 
Very lucrative quests if you're a mage. <laughs> 4,000 experience. Holy smokes. So after I brought you all of that, nothing? Come on, really? All right, we have two further trade-ins down there. Let's go for it. By the way, this is how a cliff walker looks like. We're going to mark him with a nice little moon. So that we're not going to accidentally run into him. Level 52 elite. And further down the cliffs here, where you see those little red dots, that's where the crystals uh, lie. And there is a bit of a quest to actually collect them. And uh, these giants are running around. And they are very much adding. So yeah, that's a good spot to die, even as a level 60. Okay, this one is a bit more tricky because, number one, uh, there is an ally point right next to it. And I don't know what they were thinking when they put the horde quest vendor right uh, there. There are many, many flaggable alliance characters. But the quests are good and therefore we're taking them nice so another arcane point spent into arcane subtlety and we are officially level 51 very very nice we're five percent in even holy smokes ashara is good uh, so let's do this here that little bit of questing and uh, afterwards, I think we're going to head over to Fellwood, which is another region that I wanted to show you. And after the initial questing in Fellwood, I think Yunduro Kraita, because we do already do have a couple of quests there, and simply because it's a fun area, uh, that would be a good one. The alternative is Eastern Plague Lens. Blech. I don't personally like the Plague Lens too much. Uh, some people love it. The Argent Dawn is a fun faction. And fighting undead is also okay, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I personally enjoy the other zones a little bit more. Also, the Plague Lens do have uh, the distinct disadvantage that I, th I think from my perspective, besides Ashara here, they have the highest density of random, super high level elite mobs running around. Um, there's, a, for instance, a Nerubian spider that I remember in a tunnel um, right at the um, western side of the world, uh, western or eastern plague lands. Um, and then there is Dustwing or Dustbed, the ginormous uh, dust uh, bed. And both of them are just incredibly tough really really tough creatures so um yeah i don't i don't fancy myself being around areas where you essentially need to be afraid that you might run into them anyways let me move to the quest hub and we'll take it from there okay so children in dead indeed okay we got some collection quests right there and a lot of blood elves plus glitter dust. Well, that can only be fun. I hope it is not uh, the little mana dragons again. That would, uh, fairy dragons, that would absolutely suck because they are magic resistant. But we're going to find out what we're fighting against in a second. Yeah, so blood elves. something else needs to be here glittering dust these guys new rather heavy for almost 
almost 300. That's no joke. All right, I think we're going to put up an uh, arcane elixir. And we'll take it from there. So that'll push our firepower just a little bit more. Also, instead uh, food. Just to get that extra stamina. That's a nasty combination. Crit for 900. Wow. And these are the first enemies that draw wounds. Counter spell and fire ward are doing a good job. All right, fire nova on these guys. Nine hundred thirty. Oh, nice. Yeah, the crits are coming in very, very heavy. So many resists with the wand. Okay, lesson learned there. I need to get the wand skill. Uh, we're already at a good wand skill, but we're still not hitting them. They seem to be very resistant against wand damage. Okay, we need to get up there because that's where we will find the clickable items. There we go. That's the equipment we are looking for. I think I'll fast forward the grind through them and we're just collecting the four items as well. All right, so we moved through the camp. We still need litter dust and a whistle gobber, which is part of the equipment, I suppose. But we also found uh, the hidden camp, which indeed is pretty hidden. And there's the whistle gobber. So the only thing we need to do is kind of trade the quest in, which I think was around here. Good, betrayed. Is that still a solo quest or are we rocking? Destroy the arcane focus tied to Margus Remos. red quest uh, we're not going to do that instead we're just going to grind these guys for arcane dust and then we're going to nicely fuck off and leave uh, things as they are for now because i for sure will not need to fight against red mobs at this point good let's trade in with Kim Jael first. Maybe there's a follow-up quest here somewhere. But I think we're doing very well at the moment. 
let me trade in. Very good. Find some rune that Naga have in their position in the runes of Elzriad, which that is a lot of Nagas that we could theoretically kill. But first we're going to get the Glitter Dust. So we're done with the Sun Elves after quite a few that we grinded down. Now it's time for the Nagas and all we need is a good slope down and that we can afterwards also move back up and that will allow us to grind the Nagas down there. Now this here is not it. This will allow us to grind the Nagas down there and uh, essentially find that one rune uh, that um, the goblin was talking about. We can then hopefully trade in the quest and uh, take it easy from there. So fast forward. Ready to hit the Nagas. They are relatively straightforward and since we can kill any of them it should really just very straightforward. Grind them down and hopefully get the item at some point. So, of course, that's going to be a big fat fast forward for you because I don't know how long it takes. It might be a dozen kills or so. Cool. We found uh, the sum about 10 kills or so in. Not too bad actually, not too bad at all. I wonder though why this year is a big fat red camp. Maybe because of betrayed head of Magnus Remotori. Like this is almost all death in the entire map. Like a few giants here and there, some people drowning potentially or falling off the cliffs. Now I can see that these would be people that are potentially hunted were hunted by giants and had no other way out, I guess. But then there is this here, Telassian base camp. Wow, that is quite something. All right, let me search my way out. Fabulous. So, what kind of quest did we get uh, from him? None? No. Nah, that can't be correct. Maybe it was. All right, we're handing in the magic dust and then I think we're done here for now. There are a couple of follow-up quests that lead to a shard. I think that was the initial questing. Fabulous, so let's hand in the glittering dust. Did yet another mage quest? Are you kidding me? Enchanted Coral. <sighs> yet another quest down there, but it's the only thing that we have, so might as well do it. All right, so in order to get the coral, what we need to do is we got to kill these uh, spite slash uh, sirens. Um, and they are partially dropped, which brings us into the middle of a rather large area of uh, Naga. Well, we got to be a bit careful. It's easy to pull um, ads here specifically with a lot of wandering monsters. See, there we go. Pulled one right away. It wasn't even visible.
and their bow shot abilities of course are a little bit of a pain but we're going to use um, our uh, frost barrier in order to compensate for that let me grind uh, through them get the six coral shards and then we're continuing perfect we just got it done with uh, the last element uh, or elemental core rather and that means we can go back to the archmage hopefully uh, that will conclude the business with the naga but uh, something tells me that there might be yet another follow-up quest good we found our archmage right here earned the gold <coughs> And now we need an arcane chart. Your frost bolts have a 6% chance to restore 50 mana. Holy smokes, that's good. That is good as well. One to 500 mana increases the damage of your next fire spell. Uh, that's not bad either. All right, destroy Morphus. Sounds like a quest uh, that that uh, the machines in Matrix would uh, give. Anyways, years ago, overwhelmed. Blah 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 blah. Where's that quest? Is it Sunken Temple? Yeah, Sunken Temple it is. I figured. Okay, cool. That concludes our business in Ashara for now. Great rewards, by the way. Really appreciate that. And we are now moving to. next station which would be fell uh, hard over here dark shore where are we fellwood there we go uh, already got the flight pass so you know what given that we have had quite now nah, we can still squeeze it into this episode let's do some fellwood and uh, see how the quests there are all right moving on all right, so I just looked at the time and uh, figured out, wow, the video has been going much longer than anticipated. So let's do a clean cut here and we're going to rejoin the adventure of our Frost Mage in the next episode when we're going through Feralis, not Feralis, sorry, Felwood, um, it is. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, leave a comment and like down below and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.